Nebuchadnezzar's questioning showed wisdom. A former enemy can be a good counselor. If they can be trusted. And a wise king is capable of choosing whom to trust. For are you not Croesus, formerly king of Lydia and once the richest man in the world, whose name alone signified riches almost beyond comprehending? I am he. Trusting the words of the oracle at Delphi, I went to war with Cyrus and was defeated. Cyrus pardoned me and my family. I am eternally grateful. Worthy counsel is rare indeed, as Nebuchadnezzar came to learn. At a time when his Babylonian counselors, his magi, sorcerers, diviners, magicians, and astrologers were unable to help him. No! Where is it, my king? Summon my counselors. The enchanters, the sorcerers, or the astrologers. All of them! Oh, King! My King, your wisest subjects have arrived. Command, and it is done. I've had a dream that troubles me. I need to know what it means. Oh, King, tell your servants your dream, and we will interpret it for you. No. What need I of wise men who are not wise, hmm? Astrologers who read nothing in the stars? Magicians who perform children's tricks? Sorcerers who divine nothing except what I tell them? No. It is enough for the king to dream his dreams. It is up to you to discern and interpret them. But, my lord, if only you would tell us your dream, we could interpret it as we have always done. Always! <laughs> I know you're trying to gain time or trick me into revealing what I've seen. Either way, I'll have none of it. But, but there's no man on earth who can do what the king asks. Uh, no king ever asked such a thing before. Only the gods could know these things. And when we ask, they don't answer. Well, I suggest you try and get them to answer, or beg that they endow you with the necessary skills to divine it on your own. For as I am king, I swear, that when the sun rises, if my dream is not made known to me, along with its interpretation, you will all be made shorter by the height of your heads. You may withdraw. Now! Lord Ashpenaz, is it true? It is. Why has the king issued such a harsh decree? Why don't you come along with me and ask him yourself? Lord King. What? Belteshazzar requests an audience. Speak. O oh, King, live forever. I have heard your decree, and I understand that I shall fall beneath the blade if your dream is not made known and interpreted. I ask only for more time, that I might withdraw for a while, my friends and I, to pray to our God and see if he might not make the dream known to us. The time is fixed and cannot be altered. Sentences to be carried out at sunrise. You may withdraw. So long as you return at dawn, as your fate and that of the others is one and the same, and when you return, be sure to bring your companions with you. Shall I send guards along my king? No. No, if he says he'll pray, He'll pray, not flee. <laughs> that much, at least, I'm sure. Even if we were to flee the city, the whole world would have been against us. Not that it mattered. I had given my word and intended to keep it. I would pray and hope that the answer came. Prepare to bind the prisoners. Once the sun rises, there could be no delay. Bring forth the counselors. O oh, king, 
Live forever. O oh, King, do not execute these men, I beg you. Belteshazzar, your death is upon you as well, unless you know my dream and can interpret it. I am, and I will. Praise be to the God of my fathers forever and ever. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things and has made plain all that you have asked, for he has shown me the vision of the king. Then speak. As you lay upon your bed, O king, you looked, and there before you stood a large statue, awesome in its appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of baked clay. As you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver and the gold were all broken to pieces at the same time, and the wind swept them away without a trace. But the rock that struck the statue became a mountain and filled the whole earth. You have done what I was told was impossible. This mystery has been revealed to me not because I am wiser than other men, but because God wishes you to understand the meaning of your dream. You know my dream as if you dreamt it yourself. What does it mean? You, O oh king, are the king of kings. The God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. In your hands he has placed mankind. He has made you ruler over the nation. For you are the head of pure gold. After you, another kingdom will rise, inferior to yours. Next, a third kingdom, one of bronze, will rule over the whole earth. Finally, there will be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron, for iron breaks and smashes things to pieces. But just as you saw that the feet and toes were partly of baked clay and partly of iron, so this people will be a mixture and not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. And in the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. It will crush those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but will itself endure forever. The Almighty has shown the king what will take place in the future. The dream is true, and the interpretation is trustworthy. I am the head of gold? Yes, O king, you are the head of pure gold. Surely your God is the God of gods, the ruler of kings and the revealer of mysteries. Let this man be paid honor and present him with incense. Thus the king made me ruler over the entire province of Babylon. And at my request, made Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego administrators. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold 90 feet high, all were commanded to fall down and worship, and all did as commanded, except for three. Live forever! A moment of your precious time. As your dutiful servants, we know the law, that when the horn sounds, we all bow down and worship your image. But these Jews, whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Pay no attention to you, O king. None. They neither worship your gods or serve the image of gold you have created. Nothing. Is this true? You refuse to worship my statue? O king, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Really? Then you shall be thrown into the furnace, and no god will save you from my hand. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, 
our God will defend us from it. And if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the statue of the Enough! You dare to defy me? Let the furnace be heated sevenfold. Bind them and cast them into the fire. Certainly, O King. But now I see four. And the fourth... The fourth... Looks like an angel of God. The fire has not harmed your bodies. Not a hair is singed. Your robes... There's not even the smell of the fire on you. Praise be to your God, who sent his angel to rescue his servant. You trusted in him. You defied my commands. You were willing to give up your lives rather than serve any but your own God. Therefore, I decree, any who speaks ill of the god of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego will be cut into little pieces and his house turned to rubble. For no other god can save in this way. And for a time all was well, until Nebuchadnezzar's sleep was troubled yet by another dream. It seems like Nebuchadnezzar's life was rife with dreams and prophecies, much like my own has been. Before I was born, my grandfather, Astyrges, was troubled by a dream where a flood beginning near his throne was overflowing the whole earth when he went to his astrologers and his diviners for an interpretation. They told him that his grandson was destined to one day usurp him. So he sent his daughter Mandane in exile, and when a son was born to her, he conspired to have it stolen and exposed on a hilltop to die. But a shepherd, whose wife had recently given birth to a stillborn child, persuaded her husband to trade her dead infant for the living, and the shepherd raised the boy as his own. The king, upon being presented with the dead infant, repented of his crime. He didn't learn until 10 years later that the boy was actually alive, at which time he pardoned the boy and restored him to his rightful parents. And for a time, the matter was forgotten. Until one day, years later, when you marched into your grandfather's city at the head of your troops and seized the throne of Medea, taking the old man captive, and the prophecy was proven true. All the Styrges he knew of the prophecy, but he was powerless to overcome it. As all men are powerless to prevent their fate, if the prophesizing be true. Listen then, as I tell of the prophetic vision that led to Nebuchadnezzar's madness. For when he dreamed that great dream, his enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers were once again unable to interpret the vision. When I was asleep, I had a dream which made me afraid. The images I saw terrified me. Belteshazzar, I looked and saw before me a tree in the middle of the land. 